Hey everybody, welcome back to We Sprout. Today I'm doing video number six of my 30 days of creating homeschool materials. And today I'm working on a mini Zen garden. You can buy these already made on Amazon, but I did not want to spend that kind of money. So I wanted to use materials that I had around the house to create it. And of course I wanted to do it on a budget. I am going to use this in a little piece area that I'm creating for my son. Now, one of the um, do-it-yourself projects that I'll be working on today are the little rakes that go along with the Zen Garden because I saw them on Amazon and they were $20. So I wanted to see if I could create my own. So let's go ahead and jump right in. For this project, I'm using this wooden tray and you can pick it up at your local craft store. I already had it on hand and I also have some of these black rocks. I pulled these little bamboo plants from a little pot that they came in. They're from the dollar store and I also have toothpicks. And I have a couple of pieces of wood that I have left over from um, other projects. I will list in the video description what I used in terms of width. And then I also pulled some of our clay uh, tools and some sand. I walked around the dollar store to see if I could find anything that we could use as rakes. So I bought this back scratcher and then in the kitchen section I found this fork and like a little spatula and I thought I would try it and see how they work. I also have these clippers which I picked up also at the dollar store. I have scissors, and a variety of different glues. I picked this up at half price at my local craft store as well. But you can use fix-all adhesive from the dollar store. I have painter's tape and sandpaper and a ruler. So for the first project I'm using this square rod and these Dollar Tree clippers and I'm cutting different sizes. I'm cutting one piece that's three inches for the next tool I'm making but for this tool I'll also cut a piece that's four inches and because this is not like the best thing to use to cut this what I do is I'm just turning the rod as I'm pressing down and that way I'll make sure that it doesn't snap as I'm trying to cut it. So this tool will have like a straight edge that you can use to clean the sand and erase any designs that you've made in the sand. So here is the first piece I cut out that's about three inches and then I'm going to cut one that's about four inches. Then I use a regular dowel for the handle and I measure a little bit over six inches and then I just make sure I put plenty of glue in the bottom and I use two different types of glue. One is quick dry and one is I think E6000 and then I just attach the two pieces together and there we have our very first tool. Now you want to just clean off some of this glue so it looks neat and then you want to make sure that you hold onto it for a while and this is why I use some of the quick glue as well just so that it would help dry a little bit quicker than the E6000. For my second tool I am making a rake and so I have this dowel here and I'm sanding the end to make sure it's nice and flat and I'm using my square rod piece that's three inches long. I'm also sanding the sides of this piece to make sure that it looks nice and neat. Once that is done I go ahead and I start working on the little pegs that I will attach to the bottom of the rake. I just eyeball and cut one piece off of the dowel and then I use that one piece to go ahead and mark off where I need to cut the others. So I try as much as possible to cut right on the line but because I'm using these clippers some of them ended up being different sizes and so I just what I did is I cut a few extra ones and then once I had enough of them I lined them up and I was able to see which ones I could use and which ones I couldn't. So you can see here these were the same size and then um, the ones in the other group were not. Once I had enough that were the same size I went ahead and I sanded each end because you want to make sure they're flat so you can glue them and here you can see the measurements. I drew out the lines where they will go and then I used E6000 to just glue the each peg to each line. Now I honestly don't know if I was able to glue all of them right on the line but I tried 
um, as best I could and I think at the end it worked in the end it worked out just fine so if you feel like it's not you know perfect don't worry too much I don't think it's um, a huge deal um, I can't really tell the difference when I use it in the sand but I did try to make sure that they were as aligned as possible and I did check to make sure they had enough glue and any piece that you know came off and like that one right there I went ahead and added more glue so you want to make sure that you have plenty of glue especially if you're going to have your child using it and here I'm gluing my very last piece once I have them all glued together I put it to the side and I let them dry for about 24 hours just to make sure they're nice and dry before I work with it again. Now you're going to sand the side, the top and bottom of your dowel. Again you want to make sure it's nice and flat so that you can attach it to the other piece. And then you will go ahead and attach it just like you did the other one and here I just put it on toothpicks and I let it dry for 24 hours. For the next rake, I just cut out a rectangle from the balsa wood that I had on hand. I usually buy balsa wood because I use it for a lot of different projects. And so it's really easy to work with. You can cut it, as you can see, with scissors. It's almost like a cardboard. But you do need to be careful um, because it does crack. So you do have to work carefully. As you can see here, I used a combination of scissors and a box cutter to cut out the triangles. Once I cut out the triangles, this was the easiest one to do, you just go ahead and attach your handle and then you let it dry for 24 hours. For the next tool, we will use toothpicks and you can pick these up at the dollar store. I have five of them and I went ahead and trimmed them. And then you can insert them right into this piece of balsa wood and it's very, very easy. It's almost like uh, pushing a push pin into a bulletin board because this material is really soft and then once you've inserted all of them you'll go ahead and remove them and then you'll take your E6000 glue and you want to dip each toothpick into the glue and then put it back into the opening and you just want to make sure that you use plenty of glue once you've attached all of the toothpicks back to the piece of wood, you'll grab your scissors and you will trim the toothpicks so they're all the same size. And you can kind of hold them as you're trimming them. It will move the toothpicks a little bit, but that's fine. You can move them back um, because the glue is still not dried. So you can just make sure they're nice and straight. And then you'll want to go ahead and cut that piece of balsa wood out and press it into a piece of wood or a table just to make sure they're in there um, nice and secured. And then you can use sandpaper to smooth out the edges. And this is really easy to do, especially with the balsa wood. So here you can see my piece that has been sanded and all of the sides look nice and smooth now. And then I go ahead and attach the handle, which is super easy. And for this one, you just want to attach it to one of the sides. So here I attached it to the right side. You could do the left side, but just one of the sides because this is the tool that's used to make the circles. So here it is. Here are all the tools that we've created. And I'll go ahead and show you what the set that they sell on Amazon looks like so you can compare. I think it turned out pretty good, but you let me know what you think. And I had most of these materials on hand, so I didn't price it, but... This set right here is $20. So I know for sure that for much less than that, you can create similar tools. All right, so now for the fun part, let's go ahead and put together our little mini Zen garden. And here I have all of the materials that I will use. I have these succulents that I already had on hand from the dollar store. All of my tools are in here. And then I have different size rocks. I have sand and then a lot of the stuff you already saw earlier on in the video, but um, everything is here and I tried to pick out some of the flatter rocks so that I could stack them. All right, so the moment of truth, let's try the tools and see how they work. I wanted to make sure I tried them on camera so that you could see how they worked. And I'm really pleased with this first one. It makes the sand super smooth. And here I am trying the rake and this one is pretty sturdy as well. 
The next one I tried is this smaller one so that you can make circles. And then I tried this one here. I was worried about this one just because balsa wood can be so fragile, but I think it's holding up just fine. I'm not sure how long it will last. It'll probably be the first one to maybe break. I don't know. We'll see. And then here I am trying the little tool that I pulled out of our clay tool set. And this one is nice, you know, to make circles and squiggly lines. And this is so much fun. I could totally see myself getting lost in creating sand drawings. And then I wanted to test some of the dollar store tools. And I really liked this fork. It made thick lines and it was chunky. So this would be great for maybe a younger child. And they can start with this one. And the spatula clears out the drawings nicely. Um, this one here I didn't like as much. It is awkward because it's so long and it kind of ends up working like a shovel. Alright, so now I'm going to try to arrange the rocks and the greenery in different ways. Here I'm stacking the rocks and then I decide to put little rocks around the bigger rocks. And then I start adding some of the greenery. I think for my son, because he's young, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to have the rocks, the black rocks, the bigger rocks, and the tools. And here you can see what it looks like. For an added touch, I went ahead and brought in this little indoor water fountain that I actually had on my porch. And you can listen in so you can hear what it sounds like. I'm really pleased with the way that this project turned out and I hope that this video tutorial is helpful especially for those of you who might be on a budget and looking for alternative ways of creating homeschool materials. And here you can see my little guy. I introduced the material to him earlier today. We kept it really simple just the sandbox and the rocks and I plan to introduce one tool per day just so that he learns how to use them and take care of them and then we'll also add other materials to this table. All right, everyone, have a blessed day. If you enjoyed the video, take a moment to show some love and hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Till next time, have a great day.